Hi, everybody. It is February 10, 2018. I am reading on this channel, like I read on Kafka Winston World, a lot of people talking about their dogs or cats having seizures, they themselves having seizures, or they knowing of people, children, having seizures. Epilepsy rates on the rise in the United States. A new report from the CDC indicates that the number of Americans with epilepsy is increasing with more than 3.4 million individuals diagnosed. And that is the date, August 2017. What's going on? Why, why is the diagnosis of epilepsy increasing? I tried to find stats on domestic animals, dogs, cats, having seizures. But based on all of the articles out there, I will say that dogs and cats they having seizures? That too is on the rise. Why? Could it be that we are saturated in very dangerous pulsating frequencies? So, I'm going to read some excerpts from this article or this paper that the Department of the Army United States Army Intelligence and Security Command had to turn over 2006 via a FOIA request. And the actual document, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, I will link below in the description box to this document, Bioeffects of Selected Non-Lethal Weapons. The date, the only date I could find was February 1998. Now, this is 20 pages. And I'm not even going to read all of my excerpts, but I'll show them to you if you want to just pause the video to read them yourself. But our military has been studying our brains, every detail of our brains, for a very long period of time, way before 1998, that's for sure. But this is a review of a lot of studies. And... What does this document tell us? Well, it tells us that these non-lethal weapons, these microwave frequencies, electromagnetic pulsating frequencies, well, it's a growing perception that microwave irradiation and exposure to low frequency fields can be involved in a wide range of biological interactions. We are saturated in a very dangerous environment and for most of the population now, we're screwed. This is our environment. Stuck. Stuck and getting sick. I just saw a comment underneath the video that I posted, I don't know when, two days ago, um, on these extremely low frequencies that are being set off in particular regions in the country, that person saying, most know about the effects, why don't you discuss solutions? God, you know, people who write that, do you not think about solutions for yourself? I mean, in your own brain, can it not operate to think about solutions? Can you not write down some solutions? Unfortunately, most don't know most don't want to know. They love this technology. They love the convenience that Wi-Fi offers them. They can carry around a laptop in, from their bedroom to the living room to the kitchen without wires, That those, you know, inconvenient wires. They love it. And I will tell you that based on my experience with an awful lot of people who have very serious conditions that they have been diagnosed with, like MS, they don't even care that these this wireless technology, the Wi-Fi that they themselves have brought into their home, they won't get rid of it, even when told that the Wi-Fi could be the reason for their condition and or exacerbating their condition. They don't care. Now, 
when somebody says most, perhaps they're talking about the quote unquote awake crowd. Well, the quote unquote awake crowd, awake is a misnomer and it's a, an awakening process. And an awful lot of people who are still not experiencing symptoms, they still feel okay. Even within the awake crowd, you can tell them how dangerous is the Wi-Fi in their home. And most won't do a thing to get rid of it until they become symptomatic. And once they become symptomatic, well, you can get rid of the Wi-Fi in your home and hopefully uh, you will feel better. But if you, you are saturated in an area with a lot of cell towers, you're still plugged into that cell phone, you're still staring, you know, at your cell phone screens, all the computer screens, TV screens, they're all pulsating frequencies. So I have said that unfortunately, if we can't get Americans to care about their own health, if we can't get Americans who are adults to act responsibly, do the research to find out how dangerous is this technology to their own health, we are screwed. And left with the only solution, which is reducing your exposure as much as you possibly can. This is life now. We're living in a, a in a unprecedented era. This is a whole new paradigm we're living. But in relation to seizures, our army, our, our military either studied and experimented themselves or funded the study of microwave radiation and the effects on the biological system. And this is only one document of so many. What does this document say? A growing perception that microwave radiation and exposure to low frequency fields can be involved in a wide range of biological interactions. Investigators are even beginning to describe similarities between microwave radiation and drugs. The effects of microwaves on brain tissue, chemistry, and functions are complex and selective, and hence the reason why we had the brain project during the Obama years. We had, uh, during the first Bush, Daddy Bush years, it was the decade of the brain. They have been studying all the, the, the intricacy, the details of how your brain operates. Observation showed that body weight, body weight can, that's one of the factors that can bring around their desired effect or not. So body weight. You know, I've been saying this, you know, to try to get people to understand that their experience is not everybody's experience, that our own physicality, our own constitutions, they differ from individual to individual. So if one person uh, has a particular body weight and they happen to live in an area that is saturated with cell towers and Gwen towers, they happen to live in a home with Wi-Fi, smart meters. All of that will affect whether or not that person is experiencing symptoms. So you can't just go with, okay, these microwaves, they're affecting me this way. Therefore, they're affecting everybody this way. Wrong thinking. It's kind of narcissistic thinking, thinking that your experience is everybody's experience. So I don't want to see any more comments from people who, who are writing 
attacking other subscribers, they leaving comments about how they are feeling. Anyway, so yes, observations. They found that body weight and behavior revealed that rats exposed under certain conditions to microwaves, they eat and drink less. Those that have smaller body weight, they have nonspecific stress mediated through the central nervous system. They've got decreased motor activity. The electromagnetic energy they observed substantially decreased aggressive behavior during exposure, but they also found the opposite was true. The effects of microwaves can increase the mobility and aggression of animals. So think about all of your fellow Americans acting aggressively. Many of you are experiencing people uh, not acting quite right. Um, they're hostile. I understand that we live in a thoroughly toxic environment now that is coming from all sources, our food, our water, the air that we breathe, but these microwave frequencies, what they have learned and how they can use these frequencies to disrupt our natural frequencies. We're electromagnetic beings. Our brain is so electrical. It's electrically conductive, our body, our brains. Every cell in our body generates an electric field. And it's not just humans. It's all, all life. Plants, trees, insects, four-legged, dogs, cats. Everything is made up of energy. So if they understand the particulars of how your brain is operating, well, they can, they can do an awful lot of damage. They found that microwaves related to a deficit in spatial memory function with a particular resonance tuned, extremely low frequency magnetic field. They can disrupt your brain function, functioning, the natural processes in your brain, the synapse, the, the, all of the neurons, everything that's operating in your brain, they can alter all of it artificially. And the Army found that <laughs> there's a database that's replete with phenomenological observations of biological systems affected by exposure to electromagnetic energy. Yes, they studied everything. They studied, studied the normal function of the brain and its control, its voluntary control, all forms, control of all forms of behavior, the voluntary control of body, the homeostatic parameters of the organism. In normal conditions, all the brain structures, neuron populations, networks, and single units function with specific rhythmic activity, specific electric activity, specific frequencies. Each single neuron provides specific processing of information. It receives and forms a specific pattern of impulse firing as outgoing information. Synchronization of neuron activity is a natural mechanism of the brain function that uses such controlling processes as motivation, attention, and memory in order to organize behavior. So I've heard from an awful lot of you who either leave comments or tell me that you're having great difficulty getting motivated to do anything. Well, motivational processes are considered as activating ascending signals that synchronize the neuron activity of specific brain structures and neuron networks. This activation, synchronization, in turn activates specific forms of behavior such as sexual, aggressive, ingestive activities. Yes, they can get people to behave in certain ways. Years ago, I haven't seen it recently, but years ago, I was reading so many articles about teachers, these 
26 or 20 something female teachers having sex with their students in high school, having sex with their minor students. It, it was remarkable. Behaviors that we did not see decades ago, not that it was um, absent, unfortunately, teachers, you know, those pedophiles, but suddenly we were seeing it an awful lot, what was going on. And I did enough research to understand that their behavior may have been induced. The use of non-lethal technology, depending on which frequency the synchronization rhythm occurs and how many neurons are involved, it may produce different physical effects, muscle weakness, involuntary muscle contractions, loss of consciousness, or intense muscle spasms. Higher level of synchronization takes place in persons affected with epilepsy. They experience periodic seizures due to an injury in the brain. Due to uh, the rhythmic synchronization disruption. Huh. So, our military studied. What is that disruption about? They studied neurophysiological mechanisms, neurotransmitter alterations, changes in membrane conductance. They wanted to know what are the basic cellular properties present in normal cells and tissue that could contribute to the generation of abnormal activity. They studied it all. Microcircuitry, local synaptic interactions in neocortical and limbic system, the hippocampus, the spontaneous uh, synchronization of these burst discharges in neurons, the intrinsic nature of cells, synaptic interaction among neurons. They understood that the discharge of even one cell elicits the activity of its neighbors. And you know what? All of that is the natural processes of your brain. And all of the natural processes of your brain, they synchronize with the external natural electromagnetic frequencies coming from Earth, from the ionosphere. So when you disrupt all of the natural processes, you end up with an awful lot of problems within the population. What did they find? The role of N-methyl D-aspartate, the NMDA receptors that regulate the efficacy of NMDA receptors. They found that various factors regulate that voltage dependent blockade by magnesium and modulation by other hormones, neurons. Well, spontaneous syn synchrony of these burst discharges in the hippocampal primedial, I'm sure I'm pronouncing some of these words wrong, but cell populations that are sensitive to the NMDA antagonist the opening of the NMDA channels by relieving the magnesium blockade, it facilitates an epileptic seizure. They know how to create seizures. The pulsating frequencies, that's what opens up channels, your calcium channels. You, the, NMDA channels. So yeah, they know exactly what they're doing. They're creating an awful lot of epileptic seizures in our population. High strength pulsed electric fields could produce seizures. The mechanisms to re reproduce, reproduce desired effects, to artificially reproduce desired effects, electromagnetic pulses. That's why I've been saying these pulsating frequencies are incredibly dangerous. Not only can we not adjust to intermittent irregular pulses because 
your body never knows when it's going to get hit with a pulse. You don't feel it, but every cell in your body is being damaged by these pulses. Electromagnetic energy to induce neural synchrony and disruption of voluntary muscle control. Electromagnetic pulse generators to affect humans with sufficient fields, the strong internal fields, they can, they can go right into your brain to trigger the neurons. Very sharp pulses produce a cell membranic potential sufficient to trigger neurons or make them more susceptible to firing and what do they get? A seizure. Electromagnetic pulse concept is one in which very fast nanosecond time frame high voltage electromagnetic pulse you repeat it at the alpha brain wave frequency. It is known that a similar frequency of pulsating light can trigger sensitive individuals into a seizure. Well with their method they can produce these seizures in 100% of individuals. Everyone is susceptible. Not only humans, dogs, cats, all animals. December 16, 1997 on Japanese television when hundreds of viewers were watching this popular cartoon show they were treated inadvertently to photic seizure induction. It was an indirect photic shot at their eye. The photic induced seizure is indirect in that the eye must receive and transmit the impulses which initially activate a portion of the brain associated with the optic nerve. From that point the excitability spreads into other portions of the brain. With this electromagnetic concept Excitation is directly on the brain. All regions are excited concurrently. Disruption of muscular control is anticipated to be nearly instantaneous and the recovery times of this induced seizure, they can make it look as if the person has epilepsy. The recovery time, depending on when they remove the external excitation, the extern external pulses of frequencies. They can make it look exactly like the person has epilepsy. With the seizure and the amount of time of the seizure and the recovery. That's why we have an increase of the epilepsy diagnose. 100% of the population is susceptible um, and the technology that they envisioned they have remember this is 30 years ago the targeted individual could be incapacitated very quickly and they can either produce a seizure or they could their desired effects are wide-ranging they can influence on subjects mild disruption of concentration to muscle spasms to loss of consciousness depending on the degree of incap incapacitation they want will then uh, require a certain frequency aimed at entire regions or individuals the targeted individual why do they use that term targeted individual? Our military, it's a term that our military uses. So the they can do this with radar like high peak power pulse source or an electromagnetic pulse generator. The te technologies exist today. They know exactly uh, how much pulses they need at what speed at what hertz to get their desired effect. They have aiming devices 
that were available in 1998, but in 30 years' time, trust me, they now have, they could, they, they, it's easy. Now they can produce these bursts, these nanosecond pulses, in order to stimulate the desired effect very easily. The range is far. Shielding can, metal shielding or metal screen, aluminum screening, you can buy it at the hardware, it's not that expensive. Window screening, get aluminum with a tight mesh, put it on the internal wall directly opposite the smart meter, put several layers of aluminum shielding on that wall and you will reduce the amount of pulses that are coming into your home. You have to have Wi-Fi. You can't. You don't want to get rid of it, or you have to have it because there are areas of the country now where they do not have the option. AT and T is phasing out the Ethernet cord. They're getting rid of grounded internet access. Wrap your Wi-Fi router in aluminum shielding you can at least reduce some of the exposure coming into your home. Now, the eyes are particularly particularly sensitive. Um, you might experience your eyes feeling very dry, your vision is getting worse. Here, they can, with this energy, severe pressure sensations, they can cause that. Um, how many of you have experienced like pressure behind your eyeballs and it hurts? Or dizziness? Or a vision disruption? Well, the incapacitating effect could be that the person begins to see the external world moving about. The subject sees his surroundings turning around him. And they experience nausea. Vertigo. Guess what? Vertigo diagnose. Exponentially increasing. Negative effects of audible sound. Well, if you can hear the sound, you can you can use earplugs as protection. So the high frequency sound is more easily blocked than low frequency sound. That's why they're using low frequency. You can't hear it. It is absolutely affecting you, but you can't hear it. And this is a silent war that we're in. They have quiet weapons. So you can read uh, the laser-induced biological effects. You can just stop the video if you want and check out, you know, in reading this, I thought of the fires in Northern and Southern California with these homes that that wildfire, wow, just leaped over the grass and the trees and the bushes and just directly hit the home, brought it to dust, their bathtubs, their toilets, their sinks, everything brought to dust. And I have to tell you, when I was reading this, I was thinking about those lasers and Multi-photon absorption, electromagnetic field effects, these lasers, these pulsating lasers, or a steady stream of the beam. I don't know, maybe I read an article, photons or something. I would have to do research to find out more to speak of it, but the thermal effects um, of the continuous wave and the high-powered pulsating waves cause a lot of damage. Skin and eyes, they found that the thermal damage on the skin creates burns or reddening or severe blistering or charring depending on such factors as total energy disposition, skin pigmentation, and the tissue's ability to dissipate heat. So we're all different. Um, Eyes are particularly susceptible.
to these intense pulses, not just of laser radiation, but of microwave radiation. And what they, the, the reported effects, corneal lesions, burns, cataracts, and retinal lesions. Very dangerous environment that we are living in. And unfortunately, because we can't get through to an awful lot of people, we're left to suffer it. And you will suffer less if you can reduce your exposure as best you can. You have the means to move out of a home or an apartment that has a heavy concentration of smart meters and cell towers and Wi-Fi. Do it. Do it. Because the cumulative effect of these microwave frequencies that we are now saturated in 24-7, guarantee you will only get worse. I'll link below to this document. And all I can say is, dogs, cats, they can't come up to you and tell you the symptoms that they're experiencing. They're living in homes with smart meters and Wi-Fi. These, these frequencies affect all animals. Humans, four-legged, everything. When your dog or cat had the seizure, are they, are they in an area of their home where the smart meter is in close proximity to their body? They could have gotten hit with a pulse. So if there is a smart meter in your home and you are hanging out in that room that the smart meter is on the outside of that room, uh, you are in danger with these pulsating frequencies. But if your dog or cat happens to be sleeping or hanging out in an area where there is a smart meter, keep them away from that area. Ciao, guys.